Welcome to the SWAT show, Serious Watch Talk, where you'll find zero drama, zero BS, zero hidden agendas and things to sell and so on and so forth. Just plain, simple, clean, good, honest watch talk. My guest tonight has a channel that stretches back uh, over 10 years at this point, I will admit it's one of the first channels I ever got into in the watch game when I was first getting into the hobby. I learned a lot from this guy coming over to his channel. It's where I learned all the basic, the rudimentary info about how watches are built, how they're put together, the names of the various things, you know, all that rudimentary stuff you need to know when you're getting into it. Uh, he was definitely a great source for that. Great to see watches getting pulled apart and reassembled and all of that stuff. And he was a bit of a king of the affordable watch. I hope he doesn't mind me saying that. Watches between the 200 to $800 mark. I always found him funny because uh, quite often he'd be double fisting. He'd have a watch on each wrist, which I always thought was kind, kind of funny. Anyway, definitely one of my first uh, channels that I really, really loved he also has a watch store island watch longislandwatch.com where he sells various brands affordable brands things like citizen and uh, orient and seiko's a lot of different seiko's along with his own brand the islander watches tonight we're going to be doing something slightly different from what he normally does we're going to talk about some of his favorite watches in his own personal collection i might show a few of my own Welcome to the show, Mark from Long Island Watch. Pleasure to have you, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And again, I truly appreciate, you know, <laughs> taking taking time with me to, you know, adapt to my schedule because it's kind of crazy. Yeah, we had to shift around the dates and the times a few times. Well, I don't think anybody has a problem with that. We already have 300 in the room. Wow. Guys, upvote the show. This is going to be an interesting one. You know, it's kind of funny, man, because like it's so strange because I remember watching your your shows on a regular basis. I had no idea back then uh, that the watch bug was really going to get me so hard. Right. And uh, you know, years later, <laughs> I'm going to have my own watch channel and be talking to you. Uh, it's kind of crazy how yeah. these things go yeah man but I really I, yeah I, what, my favorite thing as i said my favorite thing like i'd go to some channels just to see some watch porn you might call it you know showing watches up close and, and so on and then there'd be other channels that were more sensationalist or even kind of comic but your channel was where i where i went when i wanted to really just learn learn the stuff how the hell does the watch work how do i change a strap what do I do if I want to switch a link out? How does it all work on the inside of the watch? Some of my favorite episodes were when you took like a, you know, an old watch that wasn't working anymore and you just dismantled the thing all the way down. Right, to, right. You know, they were great episodes, man. I don't know if you're aware how much info you've brought to, so to the community. I actually didn't. And, um, it didn't really come to light for me until I did my first, you know, like public watch show in New York last year. How many people came just to say thank you for generating the, the uh, watch and learn content and stuff. It just really never occurred to me, but I guess, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll you know, bump into people now and they're like, you know, like you just said, you told me how to change my first strap seven years ago. And I'm like, <laughs> seven years ago, <laughs> holy, holy crumb. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's been a it's been a wild ride. It's been fun. A lot of uh, I think you've got over eight hundred, nearly nine hundred videos in your catalog, over yeah. fifty million views in total. You've definitely been a presence out there. Can we do something uh, very customary and do the the old wristwatch check? What have oh, you got? Are you doing your your classic uh, double fisting thing? Yeah, I, I mean, I are. always I always do. I'm well, always ninety five percent of the time, unless I'm like at the beach or doing something with my hands. So. Mm. Uh, this was a pickup I got a few months ago. This is the uh, Casio in yellow and then uh, a titanium uh, Islander. Uh, Sands Point is what we call it. Nice. Yeah, I can tell it's titanium because of the uh, the dullness. The dullness. There. Yeah, yep, for sure. That's funny that you have the Casio because I have I 
happen to have one sitting ah. here on the table. And I yeah. never wear it for one reason, because I have no clue how to set this thing. Oh, <laughs> did you get the Bluetooth one or the non-Bluetooth one? Uh, I don't even know. I oh, don't, okay. No, I don't think I got the Bluetooth yeah, one. Yeah, because this I, is like the newer version, and uh, apparently you just download the app, and yeah, it syncs the time like four times a day through Bluetooth. Dang. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I've got to get my hands on that, because I actually really like the watch. I just like, I love the shape, obviously. Yeah, it's it, but it's not intuitive, right? There's no crown. There's no the crown. hands are in sync perpetuity, you know, in sync with in perpetuity with the time. So, you right. know, I didn't read the manual, <laughs> yeah. but it did. It did take me about 15 minutes of futzing around, but I finally got it. Well, you're a better man than I, Gunga Din, as Kipling once said. Because I, <laughs> I think I sat with the thing for an hour, and I was just, I just threw it back down onto the table yeah. again. I was like, I get it. Forget it. Um, so welcome everybody. 400 in the room now. Tim Wright is in moderating. Thank you so much. Tim, wristwatch, check, Ushin, Mark, and all of you in the chat. I'm actually wearing an interesting one tonight. This is a Panerai base logo. This is not my watch. I actually picked it up from a friend in the city uh, today because I'm doing a video on big beastly watches big, large watches, and I put out a, a little commercial for it the other day, and a lot of people were like, wow, I love the commercial, but how is there no Panerai in there if you're doing large watches? I was like, right. oh, that's sure. a very good point, so I reached out to my friend today. Do you happen to have a Panerai in stock? And he's like, yeah, yeah, come grab it, you know, make a video out of it. I think he's hoping I fall in love with it and decide to buy it off. Buy it from him, right? Sure. But uh, I think that's his secret plan. But this is, it's nice to get a Panerai back on the wrist. I had a Pam uh, 210 a couple of years ago that was really nice but uh yeah every time i put a panerai on i kind of wonder why i don't have a lot of panerais in the collection right. do you have one yourself i do not i do not uh, probably too large for me for right. the most part i mean i'm yeah. like i run like a six and a half six and three quarter interest okay um, so i mean i know they make smaller ones but you know my high-end collection kind of i mean it's varied but it's the, the last probably five to 10 years has seen me most buying mostly things under a thousand bucks. I see. Yeah. I would love that about your channel as well. There seems to be the passion for the affordable watch and yeah. the expensive watch. It makes no difference. You, there's as Correct. much heart in the watches that, you know, the Seiko yeah. SKX, you know, that's the first place I, I saw an SKX was on your channel. I've got to say, I have a very large wrist. Uh, my audience are, sick of hearing me say it and I, unfortunately i've moved away from a lot of watches i don't have any more daytonas i've had three or four of them mm -hmm. but uh, as beautiful a watch as they are just don't work in the wrist at seven seven point seven five this this okay. wrist and on a well, hot day even bigger so you're you're, yeah. you're you're normal high i would say i get customers with up to nine inch wrists wow which is insane yeah Okay. And do you have a model that you advise for the, you know, recommend for those guys? No, they just need a lot of extra links <laughs> <laughs> or a, or a nylon strap. Cause at that size, I don't think you can get a leather strap to fit unless you're going to a custom maker. Now, if you guys have any questions for Mark, hold them till later in the show. We're just going to do a little bit of fun chat about watches here and show some of the nicer pieces that we have. But if you do want to uh, pick his brain, uh, I'm sure um, he'll be happy to answer your questions. That we'll do the rapid fire questions later in the show. Keep your questions concise and short and simple, and we'll try to keep the answers the same way. Can we have a look at some of your nicer watches? Because you're known for a, you know affordable watches. Your your yeah. Islander watches are affordable, sure, and the Seikos, of course, and so on. But yep. it was brought to my attention when I met you for the first time. It was about yeah. uh, four or five weeks ago on Tim Wright's t uh, Watch Talk channel. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Tim, for making that connection. Um, that you actually have a couple of heavy hitters of your own, which I thought was very interesting. I do. I do. I guess um... – I kind of start in maybe in kind of chronological order of maybe of me just even getting them. So mm. this this would be my this is actually my father's. Oops, wrong way. Oh, wow. This is my dad's date just um, two tone mid eighties. Um, I got it after he passed back in twenty fourteen. Um, but this is kind of like you know like watches that mean a lot to you. Um, yeah, this would be one of them. My, my dad was a watch 
a, not a watch nut, but a watch guy. Um, and this is the watch that I could see him, you know, fastidiously every night, you know, winding it, changing the time, adjusting it, whatever. And uh, mm-hmm. so I do love this. I, I don't wear it as much as I probably should. Um, I do love it. Um, it's just it's amazing. 36 millimeter. You never even know it. Um, very comfortable. And then it's got, you know, <laughs> hollow end links, a crappy clasp, you know, yeah. all the things today that get shit on. Um, yeah. But uh, nah. so this would be, I, I guess, in order of, of me accumulating them. That's probably the first one. Um, I'll, I'll do I'll do one while okay. while you're while you're oh, picking sure. one out. Why not? Right. We'll we'll go back and forth. We'll do a bit of a relay sure. here. Uh, I have a lot of Rolex, uh, as my viewers know, and uh, it's I've kind of gone through the the collecting journey where you go through a lot of watches, searching for the one mm-hmm. that you that you like the most. You, you're convinced that you want a Pepsi or a Batman or a whatever or a Daytona. And you think that that's going to be, you know, the end of the rainbow. And then you finally get it on your wrist and you're like, yeah, it's beautiful, but I don't know if it's me. And I don't right. know if it's, and you kind of end up doing a lot of U-turns. I've gone in and out of watches several times. I'm sure you've probably done that kind of thing yourself. And I recently was lucky enough to get a, a Pepsi, not from the authorized dealer. I paid a lot more uh, than, than retail for it, but it, it didn't matter because it, it, you know, such a beautiful watch. And I know that it was worth every penny I, I spent. I had it for Mark. I had it for like a month. I made a video. Mm-hmm. It was, it was absolutely stunning, but I just, it just wasn't for me. It just didn't look right on me. Okay. I'm always telling my audience that quite often the watch that you fall in love with doesn't fall in love with you. And it's a, a good, good idea. To, yeah. yeah. Maybe if you're shopping for a watch, to have your better half sitting next to you or someone who knows you well uh, telling you whether it suits you or not because, after all, they see you a lot more than you see you. You only see right. you in the mirror or whatever. Right. So uh, I kind of came around. I had this uh, GMT. I got rid of the Pepsi. I got all my money back for it and some. So that was fine. No harm, no fell. I made a lovely video. Of, wore it for a few weeks. But its competitor was this. And this is just – I keep coming back to this watch – this is the, the GMT 116710LN, Lunette Noir, and um, out of production since 2019. And out of all, I've had the Batman, um, I've had a couple of root beers, mm-hmm. and the Pepsi, and obviously a modern watch, you know, ceramic bezel and so on. Yeah. This I just keep coming back to this watch. It's just one of my favorites out of the entire Rolex catalog, obviously out of production. Now they're making ones with uh, not quite this design. They've put a gray and black bezel on there, but this is just a winner for me. It kind of has everything that a Submariner has to offer and more Mm -hmm. because it appears to be a regular black Submariner at first. If you, if you overlook the polished center links and so on, but you know, I, I wound up asking my audience, like I'm comparing the, the Pepsi and this and saying, what do you guys think? And I think I just kind of convinced myself in my mind that the Pepsi was the one. And pretty much unanimously, my audience said, no, no, Pepsi's nice and all, but it ain't you. That's you. That's a lot more you. Right. And I have to say, you know, if I if I ever came, you know, fell on hard times and I had to offload all my Rolex and I had to only keep one Rolex, this might be the one. It just seems to just be the sweet spot for me. I love this watch. And how often would you say you wear it? Probably once a week. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm one of these people who, you know, as I rise in the morning and shower and coffee and so on, I start pondering what watch I'm going to put on before I leave the house, you know? Right, right. that That will be my theme for the day. Nice, you know? okay. So uh, some people I know, they switch out their watches every couple of hours. I am guilty <laughs> of that also. But yeah. uh, I'm trying to cut that down now and be a kind of one watch per day guy, which is pretty good. That's a, I think to minimalist, most people- Minimalist, we call that. That's a minimalist. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think people who are not in the watch game might be like, oh my God, he's got a problem. But yeah. of course, you know, uh, a lot of us switch out our watch. We can't decide what we want. We keep right. changing the watch on the right. wrist. I probably wear this, yeah, about once a week. And as I said, as I said when I want to just come back to something simple, plain and simple, but also 
a beautiful uh, piece of Rolex. That's the one for me. Mm -hmm. For sure. Well, well I'll kind of go with what people probably think that watch is. So this would be pre-ceramic. I don't know the references like you guys do. You want to rattle off a Seiko reference or Orient reference? I can do it. Uh, this is a 2006 Submariner date. Yeah, so it's the uh, the 16610 LN. <laughs> I love that you guys know it. Uh, so I guess so. I think this was this the last year before they went ceramic. Uh, no, that would have been 2010, 20, uh, 2009, 2008, 2009 is when okay, they started so this passing is like, I want to say 2006, 2007. Right. Um, I bought this right before my first kid was born because I had a feeling I wouldn't be buying another nice watch for a long while. Does and, it have uh, a holes case? Are there holes in the pins? No. no. Okay. Like and right does there? it have, yeah, like right there. Yeah. There would be holes. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll show you. Uh, Right now, I have I have a gold version of that exact one. Or it almost. still has the sticker on the back, if you could believe it. Oh wow, good and job! I and I wear the crap out of this. You see these holes here? Oh, the lug God. holes. Yeah, the lug holes. That's I know it. what you mean. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, um, but they got rid of those around 2006, 2007. They started right. phasing them out. Okay. Do you? The next question would be, and I'm sure everybody in the in the chat is wondering, does it have? The rehot, the repeat rehot, the R R R. No, it does not. No, it's empty. Okay. Yeah, so blank. you're right at the cusp between yep. because as they phased out those um, those holes in the case, yep. they also started phasing in the R R R rehots. Right. Very difficult. And to then say. Random, random serial numbers and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. No, this was before that, um, but I actually just believe it or not. I mean, people can't believe it. I walked into a store and bought it. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I walked into a torno in uh, Roosevelt Field Mall, pointed at the case, and I said, I'll take that one. And, that uh, the, yeah. the good old days, man. Yeah, good old days, right? I mean, gra granted, it was 16, 17 years ago. It doesn't seem that long, but yeah. Yeah. DC and LV said that no holes started around 03. Okay, that's okay. good to know. I also want to get to a super chat. I saw somebody super chatted just earlier. Before that disappears, more man USA twenty five dollars. Uh, Thank you so much for that. Good afternoon, the two of the best watchmen on YouTube. Oh, you're too kind. Definitely, this guy is right here next to me. The calming knowledge baritone voice of Oh God, this is very syrupy. Me reading this, always kind of classy, Mark. Beautiful, Thank both you. gents, uh, consummate professionals. Thank you so much, more man. Very, very generous. Six hundred and thirty in the room, guys. Everybody, upvote support the channel also if you're not already subbed to mark's channel it is long island watch i'm sure most of you are but if you haven't uh do so now and get over there and see all of that really amazing info thank you trooper for becoming a channel member that's really awesome thank you so much for doing that um how often do you wear that watch that 166.10 <sighs> You know, most of my Rolexes don't come out anymore. Um, no reason other than that I just have have a lot of watches, as yeah. you could imagine. And I actually wear, you know, the Islanders probably the most, clearly. Um, They're just, your own watches. Yeah, and I just yeah. kind of, you know, I have a lot of them. I have a, basically, I have more than a drawer now, which means I have about 60-something of them. Um, wow. And, uh yeah. Less than once, a, less than once a week, maybe once a month, maybe, 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 maybe. I mean, you could, you know, you could see from you really can't see it from this the webcam, but the clasp is all scratched. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it just doesn't get the love it used to. But you know what? It still works, runs great. I do wear it from time to time, but like I said, not, not a lot of my expensive watches really get worn much. Which makes me wonder why I'm on the prowl for more watches. But <laughs> Man, this is part of the contradiction of being a watch yeah. enthusiast and collector. Seeing as you showed that one, yep. uh, I have the one I just showed, um, which is the gold version. Now, this is older. This is 1993, I want to say. i got to go back and check. But this is the uh, solid gold version of exactly Beautiful. that watch. And it would be great if my camera would help me out here. Oh, there it did. There you go. And uh, yeah, the classic bluesy. I always mm -hmm. preferred this blue over the new blue on the ceramic ones. Mm -hmm. 
because it's a little deeper, a little richer. And I just consider it kind of a, a classic watch. No repeat rehaut because we're talking well over 10 years before they started doing that. Right. But it's got the 3135 movement in there, mm -hmm. you know, tried and tested over the years. Just a classic, uh, great watch. Should be wearing a little small on me, uh, considering, right. you know, when they went up to the maxi case, uh, the super case and the maxi dial, things got a little larger. And now, of course, they're doing them in 41, which would be more me. But because it's gold, it tends to wear a little larger. Right. You know, its dimensions Pops are the more. same. Yeah, it pops a lot more. There's a lot sure. more presence because it's gold. Yep, I know absolutely. this is kind of heavy hitter world and uh, a bit of a show off watch, a bit of a look at me kind of watch. But I just love how um, I just think that that was a great moment, just like your one there. It was a great moment, uh, a sweet spot, a great moment in Rolex history when the design, they may have just gotten the perfect Submariner design. Right. And I think they've been chasing that beautiful moment ever since then so it's one of the it's one of my favorite watches i own and believe it or not gets a lot more wrist time than you would think mm -hmm. because i bought it obviously uh used there were no papers and no box but i know the source of the watch is older gentleman here in venice older guy with a lot of money and a lot of watches and he just you know the box and the papers got thrown away years ago they did that right. didn't matter to him it was back in the days when that wasn't even a thing to do hold on to the box and papers and uh, i sent it off to rolex uh for a revision it was missing one link so they put on an extra link and they did the uh the service on it they call it revision here in italy uh the service they replaced the crown the crown needed replacing and of course they gave it that light uh go over there with the right. polishing uh but it came back looking and feeling basically brand new new and i got my two-year warranty and you know because of that because the watch isn't brand new and i didn't buy it myself uh you know brand new i find that you know you're a little less um precious right you know i often think of the guys uh because i lived in new york for a very long time mark actually in queens Mm -hmm. And I often uh, would think of those uh, old Italian families in Queens that would you'd go, go into their living room and all the furniture would still covered have the in plastic. plastic. Yeah, <laughs> in, including the 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 lampshades and everything. Yeah, yeah, you're like sure. you're not really enjoying the furniture, but they're just they can't get over that kind of new thing. It's like they don't want anything tarnished. Right. Uh, when I bought a Daytona for the, the ceramic Daytona for the first time, it was also used. Mm -hmm. And I bought it from the gentleman who lent me the Panerai today. And he uh, he was like, listen, I could give it a, a, you know, a polish and make it look, bring it back to new. But if I do that, you won't wear it. Right. Ta exactly. Take it as you, it is. You want the dings already in it. Yeah. And he sure. was so right. I wore it out that evening and I just, I didn't have to think about those right. little micro scratches on the clasp. They were already there. Right. So I find that this gold watch gets a lot more wrist time than a gold watch should. Right. And quite often I, I'm wearing jeans and t-shirt and I stick on the gold watch. You know, right. it's just like, I'll grab nice. it. Yeah, it is a nice watch. Really is. What's next on your end? Um, well, since you just talked about clasps, I have my Yacht Master 40. Oops. One day mm -hmm. I'll get the camera angle right. So this is, uh, let's see, my 40th. I put this my 40th. Blue dial, uh, red seconds end. Um, but this. I love this, that watch. This is this should be a polished center clasp. And it is just, it's brushed at this point. I mean, Because I wore this thing. You see the links are nice and shiny. And then this clasp whole portion. Worn down. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I wore this to death. I probably wore it the better part of a year daily. Daily. The the platinum bezel even has a ding in it um, right wow. next to the 12. Um, but that eh, doesn't bother me. Um, I'm like kind of a, I'm one of those, my, one of my sayings is no safe Queens. I mean, if you buy it, you're supposed to wear it. Um, but I wanted to get something that I, I love divers. I'm a big diver fan. And mm -hmm. I wanted just to get something different. I like different things. I don't like yeah. every, you know, of course I have the Submariner who's always wanted one, but I like things that, I guess you might say it's stealth wealth or things that fly under the radar, you know, a model that's not really well known. 
Um, beautiful blue, yeah. big big blue fan. Love blue watches, uh, and that was just uh, one. When that, did when did you get it? So that's my fortieth. That was two thousand six. So it was well before. Wait, no, wait, about, my, my 2016. 2000. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say that doesn't sound right. 2016. Well, in 2006, it would have been that. It would have been that silver. Yeah. Shiny, uh, the rhodium. Uh, whatever. Yeah, the rhodium yeah. dial. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, well, I mean, in 2016, that was still that Yamaster 40 was still not a very very popular watch. It was no, a little it was off. No, either that though. or the uh, the rhodium with the uh, blue seconds hand. Those were basically the choices of color. Yeah. And uh, nah, so that one definitely, definitely still gets worn. Um, but it, 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 it saw a share of, of battles. Did you get it from the authorized dealer? I guess you probably I walked sure in and just did. bought that. Good man. I sure did. I went to a dealer in New Jersey because they had one. And mm -hmm. I, well, the funny story on that one is yeah, I, I walked in and I bought the watch. Um, mm -hmm. Credit card or cash? No, I gave the guy cash. Nice. Paid for it in cash. The owner wasn't there. The owner was out for lunch. They said, we'll size it for you. You know, come back in, you know, 20 minutes. So we walked out of the store. We come back. Mm -hmm. He had sized it, puts it on my wrist. Thank you very much. They swiped the warranty card. I walk out. I'm going to walk out the store. And the manager or the owner, whoever he was, you know, goes to shake my hand. Says, Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Said, what do you do? I said, I own an online watch business. And he said, if I knew that, I would never sell you the watch. Right. I said, why? He's like, you're just going to flip it. I said, no, I'm right. not. I said, I'm buying this for personal consumption. I said, first of all, I just paid retail. I'm like, <laughs> and I guess this was the beginning of, you know, yeah. people starting to accumulate the watches. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, if we didn't swipe the warranty card already, I would I would take that out of your hand. I'm like, oh, wow. very nice. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs> Jesus, that was a dampener at the end of your lovely day buying a brand new yeah, Rolex. Yeah, you, it really, you're right. It was. It, it was kind of a buzzkill. Yeah. But whatever. Tough shit. Um, I love it. And served me. it has served me very well. Have you learned a lesson now, though? Like when you yeah, go in looking at what? Keep your mouth shut. Yeah, keep your mouth shut um, for the most part. Um, most people don't. It's, it's surprising because people think, "Oh, you you must have connections all over the place." Yeah, I don't. My I have connections with things that I sell. You know, outside of my outside of my umbrella, I don't know really know anybody. You know, I can't get a Rolex or I can't get an Omega or a Tag. I can't get any of that stuff. I'd have to walk into a store just like a regular guy. Well, a lot of people assume that about we YouTubers that we somehow have some sort of. We're at the front of the line somehow with right. these authorized dealers. It's actually the other way around. I don't, I keep it on the down low as yes, well. Yes, exactly. Yep. I don't want people to think, first of all, I don't, you know, for exactly that. Like they might think, well, if you're in the business of watches, even if it's just talking about them online, you're not a regular consumer. I think that's right. how they see us. We're just right. not, yeah. They want just a, a regular citizen, you know, yes. who just wants a nice watch. Right. Because they're much less likely to flip it. So how much risk time does that uh, Yachty get? Um, I mean, not obviously now, not as much as it used to, but she gets put on probably a couple of times a month. And do you ever configure, because uh, I've seen you mod uh, Seikos and so on, do you ever mod any of your watches to appear like your heavy hitter watches? Like, do you make a Yacht Master? Uh, it's so funny. Look? I mean, it's almost like you're like uh, burying the lead. It's like you're segueing for me. So <laughs> somebody actually commented, there it is, Agent J about the ISL 18. Yes. So this is the Islander ISL 18 that I happened to bring here because I was inspired by my Yachty. Right. Let's see them side by side. Yeah. Yeah. Like, okay. This whole backwards thing is killing me. I'm sorry. I know, man. It's rough. <laughs> Um, you think I could figure it out, but I can't. Uh, so I was inspired, you know, just to make an SK. Wrong, wrong hand, an SKX mod um, that looked like the Yacht Master. And sure. I did. And it turns out that this is, I don't know if it's still the best seller. It's pretty damn close. Sold, really? Sold a butt ton of these. Um, yeah, well north of 500 units at this point. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just a beautiful watch, beautiful blue. And then, you know, the kind of the embossed bezel and stuff, it just kind of works. Uh, Can I see the profile on that watch before you put it down? Oh, yeah. So obviously, nice. obviously, Real Rolex thicker. does a much better job. <laughs> yeah. But Rolex is only 100, you know, the Audi is only 100 meters water resistant. Right. Um, and and so your one? 200. 200. So you need, a, you need a thicker crystal for that. From what I understand with the Yacht Master, that is the, 
the limiting factor. It's not the case. It's the crystal. And what is the price on that watch, Mark? Uh, I want to say three twenty nine. Hmm. No, you're asking solid. me the yacht master for a second. I can't even tell no. you. <laughs> no, no. It does. It's it's irrelevant what the prices are these days. Anyway, yeah. they're going all over the place. True so. as well. True as well. Nearly six eighty in the room, guys. Uh, this is the Swatch Show. Serious watch talk, just direct stuff. Our guest tonight, of course, is Mark from Long Island Watch, one of the better channels, one of the channels that's kind of stand, stood the test of time. Man, when your channel, when I was watching your channel at first, probably five years ago, four and a half, five years ago, there were a lot of other channels alongside you, yeah. and a lot of those now have gone. They yeah, moved sure. on or they've dissolved. It's funny. What? I see I see a lot of these people like when I go to these various shows, I'm like, I've seen you before. And they're like, Oh yeah, I had a channel. I'm like, Oh really? I'm like, I knew I knew you from somewhere. And what keeps you going and doing it? Is it just do you find that it helps your business? Is your business oh my God, reliant? It's, it's the only that's the only reason. I mean, I oh. love teaching and stuff. Like, um, you know, if I wasn't my background's engineering. I worked in aerospace engineering for thirteen years. Um and I mm. love technical stuff, and I have, I have a, an ability to break down technical topics into layman's terms. Um, so, I, right. but I love teaching. Uh, so, you know, I do all the watch and learn because I love teaching. But the main thrust of the channel is it's a tremendous commercial for the store. It's all it is, and I make no qualms or bones about it. Every yeah. video I do, I'm in the bag for. I'm trying to sell you whatever I'm showing you. I try mm -hmm. to be honest. Um, which is why I, I generally don't review other watches that much. I started to get into it because people like to see it. Mm -hmm. um, they want to see me review other stuff. So I started, you know, I bought the Casio and some other stuff, you know, and I'll review it. But yeah, the, the channel exists solely as, a, you know, a mouthpiece for the store. It's fantastic, man. Wesley, 10 books. Oh, Mark, nice. I just bought the Calibro. Nice. Loving Thank you. it. I'm glad. Yeah. Excellent, and thank you. Canadian Watch Monkey <laughs> says, Mark, so glad to see you shrunk your logo a little. Is that a fact? Yeah, it depends on what watch you're looking at. Mm. Yeah, the logo is very contested, but yeah, that's another show. Let's move on in your collection. Let's see some um, more of your favorite um, watches. Okay, so this is 2012. Yeah, 2012. Mm. Um, this was purchased kind of after a, a kind of life-changing thing. I had a uh, surgery or whatever. Um, and that's wanted to get a nice piece. So this is Ulysses Nardine Maxi Marine Chronometer. And as I said before, I just like watches that kind of definitely fly under the radar. I could wear this in a room with a hundred people in it and maybe one will know what the hell it is. Um, right. So it's the blue dial. Uh, again, this is a watch that I definitely wore the bejesus out of. Yeah, you uh, really enjoy your watches, man. I think it's an inspiration. Yeah, you got to yeah. you got to enjoy them. At this point, like I said, I probably have too many. Um but uh I simply lo I love this thing. Just it's very different. Um I do love you and I aspire to own a freak one day. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I will eventually. Um mm -hmm. I just just everything about this the, from the oversized hands to the the big romans. Look at those big romans. Oh my yeah. gosh, you know. Yeah, and let me move the hands around a bit i do find actually funny oddly enough on this one the crown seems to unscrew itself but oops well that's gorgeous yeah, yeah it really is it's a uh, just like i said very different uh what are the complications on that is it uh, so it's a power reserve in a small seconds okay yeah and a uh, inner cyclops date i have to yeah i need reading glasses how much risk time would that one get well again used to get a ton now yeah once a month or so Hmm. doesn't doesn't see that much yeah you know like i said you know my i i live i live in affordable land and, and and you know maybe your viewers you know live in a different land but i i guess there's a certain i don't want to say tact but you know if i'm doing filming videos asking you to buy a three hundred dollar Islander, and I have a forty thousand dollar watch on my wrist, um, it just maybe comes across as snobbery, or it might <laughs> yeah. be poorly taken. So I really, I, so this is like what I wear on the weekends and everything. I, I wear affordables constantly, um, only because also I'm not afraid to bang them up. Um, my viewers are kind of come from all uh, sides. 
you know, mm-hmm. there are a lot of viewers of mine who wear Rolex, who wear AP, and so on. Right. But I have a I have a love for Seiko. I just mm-hmm. adore Seiko. I just think for the price point, they're some of the best watches in sure. the world. They're just sure. fantastic. And some of my biggest videos have been on Seiko. So I have that crowd as right. well. And I always find that they get very excited at the idea that I'll do a comparison video, like the one coming up this week, where I have some really, really heavy hitting watches and there's a Seiko in there too, that mm-hmm. they can sit next to these much more expensive sure. watches and still stand up mm-hmm. beside them. This is a new acquisition of mine, a recent uh, acquisition. It's a Tudor that I'm loving. It's a two-tone two um Tudor Black Bay Chrono. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just getting to love Tudor. I have a few of them at this point. Yep. I made a video on the white dial one, the Panda one, which is, was very popular about a year ago. and I believe it's still a wait list item, but I found it kind of hard to read. It was hard to read the time because there's white hands on a white dial. Oh, is it really? Yeah. It is kind of tough to read. It's certain light. I found it does, yeah. It's counterintuitive. That's yeah. the, its first job is yep. to, you know, it's you can glance at the watch. I find that with Daytona's too, by the way. You, you know, it's you have to do more than one glance to read right. the time. Right, to get the time going. And sometimes you have to angle your wrist to catch mm-hmm. the light properly. Right. So this one's a lot more legible. I absolutely love it. Uh, the reference on it is the seventy nine three six three, the M seventy nine three six three. It's two tone, you know. Some people aren't into two tone. I love it, and I just love uh, the size and the heft of Tudor. They're mm-hmm. just really well built watches. You have any Tudor yourself? I don't. I don't. Hmm. I know it's shocking, right? So I come. I mean, I'm not going to say we're the same age, but we might be close. Um, mm-hmm. I come from the time growing up where Tudor was just a poor man's Rolex. Yeah. And because of that stigma in my mind, I don't own one. It's as stupid as it sounds. Everyone's got a reason or something, you know. You won't buy an Islander because you hate the logo. I won't buy a Tudor because that's <laughs> that's what it means in you my still brain. Still got that in your mind. I mean, yeah. it's come a long way from of that. Of course, it now. has. Yeah. Oh, I don't, and I and I know. Um, but yeah, there's other high value watches I have my eyes on. So, but just not a Tudor. Mr. Badgas, five bucks. Thanks so much. Mark, your review of the lack of Frankfurt GMT lit my fire. So easy to read and great nice value. Not a, not a cheap watch at all. Nice watch. Old watch ladies in the room. The woman with the greatest collection in the world. world. Uh, the aunt, uh, she's speaking to someone else, though. The Aunt Master is like no other Rolex. Uh, you didn't ask me, but that's my twopenny worth. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> it's a very underrated model. It is. I, it was my first that. Rolex. Yeah. That was yeah, that that yacht you have, that blue one. I got yeah. the rhodium one with the okay. blue accents. Mm-hmm. And that was my very first Rolex from the authorized dealer. I got about four years ago. Yeah. Uh, it was a previous reference to the 116622. It's onto mm-hmm. the 126622 now. Yes. And um I got it at a five hundred dollar discount from the authorized dealer. Look at you. Those Wheel days and deal are it. gone. Those days are gone, man. You, you won't get one under retail now. Yeah, no, I uh, no Yachtmaster two for you. Yachtmaster two, no. You do no. have the big wrists, so I do, I do. I should look at one, but and that complication is pretty damn impressive. It is. It I, really is. I think if I'm going up there, I might go Sky Dweller though. At that point, no, um, you know? so that would be one of there's two Ro- Rolexes that I like still um the blue dial sky dweller and then mm-hmm. the uh 228206 platinum ice blue baguette dial Oof. that's um yeah i've come i've come close to pulling the trigger but the price keeps coming down so it's <laughs> it's a buyer's market right now it's a bust has been for several months big south yeah. 499 thanks so much i've owned ah. the isl 18 three years now runs great keeps good time still looks sharp yeah not speedy sharp that's an in joke because i okay. i was i i was talking about the new speedmasters there a year ago year and a half ago uh how they have sharp edges that they didn't feel like they were finished correctly so it's kind it. of an in joke with my crowd 700 in the room guys up vote this is mark from long island watch we're just going through his higher 
end watches because of course he does have a lot of watches that are in the two to 500 to 800 bracket but now he's showing us his uh the heavy hitting end of his collection what's next do you have any okay, more so you said say i have a bunch more you oh, said great. seiko yeah so here is this is actually a spring drive but a non let's wind it a non uh Grand Seiko. Grand Seiko spring right. drive. So it's a Prospects, uh, limited edition. Let me run. Let me run that bad boy. This is a this is a recent release. Yeah, this correct? came out two and a half years ago. Right, because I'm aware. Uh, sorry. Do you know the reference? SNR 049. Let me check so it. This is their or SRN SNR SNR. SNR 049. 049 let me check it out is that it yeah, yeah i'm aware of that yeah let me check it out right now yeah you got it oh. snr 049 j1 so it's a uh well, japanese every, release yeah every every spring drives a japanese release um so this was I one aware that, that i yeah that's they don't give that to america to americans <laughs> <laughs> or anybody else so yeah that's the one um so this was a limited run of Let's see if I can, you might have it on screen there, but uh, 400 pieces. This happens to be number 132. That's right. I saw it um, in a magazine. So it's, it's full titanium, spring drive, uh, you know, uh, world time. It's a traveler's GMT. So the hour hand, you know, does that. Skip. You know, when, yeah, like that. And the date yes. goes forwards and backwards as you go through the time zones. Uh, let's see. You can watch the eight go to seven back to eight back to seven um so power reserve three days of reserve uh 24 hour bi-directional smooth bezel titanium with their dia shield uh and the clasp extends to and stuff it's got a whole bunch of stuff um but i saw it in a magazine and i was just totally taken because again blue i'm all about the blue yeah and it's, this is supposed to be like looking at earth from space so the blue is earth and then the space the blackness of space is the top oh wow i really and like that I so this that. is where as i said you know i can get things that i sell well i don't sell these obviously um, i don't uh -huh. sell any seiko north of like 600 bucks i'm not allowed to okay um, and i reached out to my rep and i said i showed him the picture i said i really 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 want one of these <laughs> and i never asked i never asked for favors and never and so they rang it up the chain it went up to the vp of east of the eastern united states and they said sure so sell the guy one so i got one uh that they I retail they retail at 5500 you're into I, you're well open to grand seiko prices yeah you are almost. i paid i paid cost which was very nice nice um, so it was a decent discount uh yeah. yeah so it is in grand seiko territory people are like oh yeah. for that money just get a grand seiko but that's if you care about what's written on the dial um i really don't I'm I'm proud to say that the chapter ring is misaligned at the six. Probably, <laughs> I don't care. Can you see it? Uh, let me check. Let me get you on full screen again. There you go. And I might be able to uh, see it. It's 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 off by a smidge at the six o'clock, but definitely right. noticeable. It's not one of those things that you have to like strain your eyes to see. I I looked at it and I was the second I pulled out of the box, I I laughed. <laughs> I said, even, uh, even for five grand. Even for five grand. I, I think from what I've noticed, I think they've ironed out those issues. I think it finally made its they're, way back to them. And now doing, that they've upped their game a little they're bit. They're doing better, regard. I will admit. That is correct. I do feel that they're kind of getting things a, a little bit right. Look at those dramatically tapering lugs. They just, it, they must yeah. wear. It's a what big is it? watch, but yeah. it's very cozy. It's very comfy. And of course, since it's titanium, it's freaking light as a, light as a, what is it? A hundred and, it's 146 grams. So it weighs less than an SKX. Wow. Yeah. And it's big. 40, what is it? 45, 46, 45. Yeah. But it's not going to wear like a 45. It's going to hug the wrist a lot yeah, better. Yeah, it correct. does. It works yeah. fine. It it works fine. Like I said, it's got this, it's out there, Comfort Link Extension, or that's what Rolex's name, right? You hold yeah. down the deployment buttons. Oh, and, right. You've got a yeah. little bit of a, okay. You've got a little bit of a, you know, summer swell or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So Let's move to the next one. I want to okay. see more of your watches. Let's uh, So this would be my heaviest of heavy hitters. Oh, I wasn't aware you had this kind of stuff, this, man. So is this a, is this a 116509? uh is it's white gold yeah oh yeah <laughs> dang dude Look so at as you. i said i love my blue dials yes 
I think I everybody would love that blue dot. I wasn't yes. kidding when I said I wanted two two eight two oh six. I just you know I just biding my time until the price has come down enough. Um, right. But yeah, so this was um, let's see, two years ago. This I got from the gray market or whatever it might be. Yes. Um, but I mean, it's crazy for what I bought it for, um, and then same place offered me another 15 grand two years later to buy it back which was kind of insane isn't that amazing and i said that no. happens and i said no <laughs> <laughs> uh but this one i do take care of it actually there actually is a piece of tape vinyl oh look at you just you are, just, oh, the clasp. just the clasp just the clasp not the bracelet just the clasp um only because obviously my wrists you know uh, all of our wrists hit the deck and you know what sure I looked at my Yachty and I was like, eh, but this is gold. That means I'm, every time I hit the desk, I'm, I'm leaving like another $3 worth of Rolex gold on the counter. On the counter, yeah. Yeah. So, Can, uh, but yeah. Do you, mind, so do you mind putting it on? I want to see it on the wrist. Oh, just sure. to, you're so lucky, man. You get to wear these Daytonas. You know, I fell in love with Daytonas and they just, uh, I wish they made a slightly larger one, like a 41 or a 42. Yeah, man. I mean that is incredible that piece. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's got good glitz to it, you know, and you know, I'm not as, as oh, Jesus. I, I'll get used. To, I'll get used to this when the show's over. <laughs> um, you know, I, I never really knew much of the difference between stainless white gold and platinum until I was at a Rolex dealer like, when I was in Vegas a bunch of years back. I actually bought my wife a chocolate uh, uh, date just and. Um, the sales lady was very nice. She took out a, a steel, a white gold, and a platinum, all right next to each other. And right. I was, and it's amazing the difference in whiteness between the steel and the white gold, and then the different, difference in different whiteness. luster, right? Different oh, light. Oh yeah, off. platinum versus white gold. Platinum is like, like crazy how how white it is. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's it. That's the one. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed that even between. Um, previous model uh, stainless steel and current stainless steel that the that the polishing is a little different or there may be a different balance in the uh, in the components of the steel it's amazing to me how different watches can have a different luster it's not right. going to come out in the photograph online no. you're not going to see it this you need is, to have th yeah. this watch is impossible to photograph i mean it, you can almost never get the blue that they show in the picture or the blue that you kind of perceive with your eyes i'm just mm. i'm always try to take a picture of it i'm like yeah it just looks mediocre at best Stay. this is getting better and better let's move on What's oh next, that's man? that's as good as it's going to get man it's not going to get better than that um, this one <laughs> might be interesting. This sure. is, uh, one of the new Accutron electrostatics. Oh, wow. Now I was really interested in those old, the space view, the Accutron space. I have one view. of those also. <laughs> I, I think I also. saw it on your channel the first time. Yeah. And you, that's you what got me interested did. in. Now, does this one yeah. use the same exact, uh, no idea? So, the one? Okay. No. So what they did here was, come on, there you go. What they did here was so there's a pendulum in the back, and then, okay, but gee, I'm gonna, I should just flip my whole brain around. Hey, so you're doing fine, man. Down here, these two wheels, if you could see, they look like they're flashing. It does look like that, yeah. So what that is is they are actually they're electrostatic generators, um, and the pendulum is moving them and they're generating electricity. Uh, powering some kind of a storage storage unit, capacitor, mm -hmm. battery, whatever, and then it's driving this electrostatic motor up top. Mm -hmm. And that motor is pinned to the second hand that's moving around. Just cool, cool technology. Um, it's old technology, um, but they've packaged it in a watch, you know, like an open view, like a space view, like you said. Um, mm -hmm. But the problem is that the laws of physics right now are just, you know, the, the watch has to be this big to generate the power that it requires to run. Um, is that I'm a sure. tuning fork in the dial there? Is there, or yeah. is that just a logo? Yeah, it's just a logo. I don't. Okay. Yeah, they don't use tuning forks. No. Yeah, no. Those, those went out the way of the dinosaurs. So, what kind of time does that? Is it extremely accurate? Like, the yeah, space it's accurate because it's got a quartz yeah. oscillator in it, and right. uh, I guess I've never really measured it, but it's it's accurate. It's very accurate. It's got a power <laughs> save. After a while, the second hand will stop moving, and then the uh, but oh. But the and reactivate. 
Yeah, but the minutes will keep going, and then the seconds will start moving again. So, yeah. Wow, Nifty. Man. Let's see. Um, I might only have one, one more heavy. I have a whole heavy hitter section of my watch chest. But this is heavy in terms of weight, and just not a lot of people usually see these. This is a Zin 757 UTC Chrono. Look at that thing. So, yeah, uh, so it's fully tegmented steel, which basically means it never scratches. Um, mm -hmm. Ditto with the bezel insert. Um, just a beast of a watch. Bought this many, many years ago. Uh, again, secondhand. Zins you can buy secondhand because they never really age. That is a monster. Yeah, it is a monster. Uh, the, profile, the profile is... But is it uh, yeah, okay? So it's uh, it's steel. It's not titanium. It has that dull uh, titanium Correct. So, look. so what Zin has this coating. Let me just, let me move some of the hands out of the way so you can see the GMT hand and stuff. And now I'm covering the date like a moron. I was at the Watch Pro Salon there over a year ago, and the Zin counter was the most interesting. And they yeah. were showing me how their some of their metal was just unscratchable. They had yep. a little blade there like trying to scratch it, and they couldn't do it. Yeah, so Amazing. this is so like I said, so this is tegmented steel, which is a process that it's a nitrogen hardening process. Damasco has a similar process. And mm. yeah, if I look at this, I mean not that I wear it a lot, but even the buckle, it's there's not a scratch on it. And this Crazy. is easily oh my god, I've been out of my job over ten years now. So this is probably fourteen to fifteen years old. Wow. Yeah. So it looks as it looks as new as the sapphire crystal. Amazing. Any idea yeah. what movement is in there? Is it in-house? It's just, it, yeah, it's a, well, to, to Valju, you can tell from the orientation of the subdials, it's a Valju 7750. Oh, of course. They've yeah. basically just modified. It's center yeah. seconds, uh, I guess they so took it, out. You can feel that rotor wobble around. When oh, you're yeah. Moving. Well, oh, the yeah. watch is really heavy, so it kind of dulls out some of that unidirectional okay. winding, but yeah. <laughs> okay. That's yeah. awesome. It's great to that see would these be, watches. Yeah, that would be the end of my really, I guess, kind of, you know, I have a I have a Speedmaster also, um, couple I have a couple other Zins. I have a bunch of Damascos. Uh, I guess a whole bunch of crap. Fantastic. Let's move on to the rapid fire questions, guys, oh, for sure. the last part of the show. If you have any questions, get them ready. Start typing them in now, and we'll get through them. Yeah, guys, let's uh, get through some questions here. Nice uh, and simple and concise, if you can keep them that way. Let me go back because I think people were asking questions before and didn't realize that they should hang on. Um, Forbin Colossus, weirdest mark thing. When he wore gloves with his logo on both gloves, people complained. Wow. Went to only one logo on one glove. These wow, people are watching wow. your every move. That's man. crazy because that's like when it first. You're going back a long time. Yeah, he's right. Feels like it got confusing. I don't know why, but Stefan Van de Ven. Will island watches come to Europe? He means the he means the islanders. Is that yeah, well, he them? yeah he means will I get a warehouse so they can shop tax free? Right now, it's not in the cards. It's a it's a business decision. Um, it's just not it's just not easy. Uh, there's a lot of tax issues, uh, a lot of logistics problems. Um, so right now, if someone from the EU purchases any watch uh, any watch from outside the EU, they all know that they have to pay VAT and duty on import. Um, so now, no plans yet. I've looked into it. I've really gone deep into the rabbit hole, uh, but it's just not worth the added expense at this point. Alexander Shen. Hey, Mark. What would be your absolute favorite watch? Nice, simple question. Uh, that would probably be, you know, probably the one that means the most to me would be my, my dad's date, just to tell you the truth. Ah, nice. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, anything with sentimental value. Yeah, right? it's I something about it. I don't wear it all the time, but I do like it. And it means a lot to me. I got a lot of images in my head of him wearing it at the hardware store where I grew up, basically. Um, him standing on the counter wearing it. And so this kind of means a lot. 
I was watching your little uh, preview video there, your introduction video on your channel, where you actually have a uh, little footage of you and your dad and yep. talking about your dad in the warehouse and all. It's quite touching. Lyndon, any chance we'll get another Red October? I still have my original. Yeah, it's funny. I almost brought that one to the party. I didn't. Um, no, I made 200. That was my first limited edition watch. So basically, I'll let you know, the Red October was basically the ISL 18 but with a mm -hmm. red seconds hand and a PCL bracelet. So it basically looked exactly like the Yacht Master. And right. I think I sold all 200 pieces in, in like a week or two, which was, you know, again, this was when I first started out. It's kind of crazy. Um, but yeah, no, I did 200 and they're done. Lame DOS 50, thinking of buying the Seiko Prospect Speed Timer Go Large. What do you think? I don't know it. Do you know it? I like the smaller one personally. It's, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's proportioned very nice. Um, they haven't let me sell the bigger one yet. Typical Seiko shenanigans. Um, but I do like the smaller one. Oliver Orban, Mark, do you follow the trend when you release new color, a new color of Islander watches? So a good example would be, have you released any Tiffany dials, for of example? Course. Yes, yeah. we kind of keep on top of, you know, it's almost impossible not to. Uh, so yeah, I released a Tiffany dial, um, what we call the Brookville uh, ISL 85, and it's still, it still continues to be a bestseller. Uh, did a, um, See if I can find it here. Um, if you're on the Islander page, it's probably yeah. somewhere. It should be on the on page one since it floats automatically by most popular. Let go to page two. Let's see. Or suddenly it's out of stock. Go ahead. Go down. <laughs> I'll play if I see it. Is that there it? it is. Yep. There it is. 349 yes. bucks. Nice and affordable. Yeah. Yeah, so we do follow. I we do follow trends for the most part, um, uh -huh. and sometimes trends just there's trends that are happening I didn't even know about, and we strike it with with a color, and I'm like, oh, I didn't even know this was popular. <laughs> I think that goes for every watch brand. They didn't. They don't know what they're getting into. It's, it's something yeah. that comes along after the fact. Think of all the people who picked up the the Tiffany blue uh, OP there when it was yep. just released and it wasn't even po uh, very popular yet. Cliff asks, and he's saying, I've seen your videos, great stuff. He lives in Ronkonkoma. 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 Yeah. What town are you in? Uh, I'm, I am in the town of Huntington. Huntington, yeah. I've been there a few times. The funniest name out there in Long Island is Hapog. That's the one. Yeah, I that's not the about. funniest. There's a lot of funny names out here. Really? I knew you were going to say Hapog for a reason. That you got you got your Quag. Yeah, you got your Napig, your Amagansett. Uh, yeah, all these towns named after, uh, I guess, Indi Indian tribes or whatever. And yeah, right. That's why we name all of our models after towns on Long Island, but those don't get it. Alvaro, best Swiss sub, hundred. A uh, thousand value proposition right now. Um, I would probably say. I, I see, I've never I've never owned a Steinhardt, um, but I, I'd almost have to say they do an amazing job. Um, but from what I know personally, uh, I think Devosa does an amazing job. Pavic eighty. What was Mark doing in aerospace? Greetings from X quality engineer in aerospace. So I was a mechanical engineering in aerospace, uh, packaging of electronics on mostly airborne platforms, both black and white. Jim Hadar, runs of 500 pieces per model. How many runs do you need per month to be profitable? That's an interesting question. So I run business like someone that never got a business degree because I didn't. Um, so because of that, since day one, I've been profitable. I've been profitable since 2001. Um, so I never have to worry about that. Uh, I sell a model. I make money. Uh, never took taken out a loan on the business. Uh, everything that I have, I own. Uh, so, yeah, I don't really – we probably make more than most people might think and probably sell more than most people might think in the Islander lineup. But, um, you know, we're kind of planned out at least till close to the end of the year with a new release about every two weeks or so. This is a general one here. What are your top three watch brands? It was your favorite for, for me personally. Mm -hmm. I'm a, a tremendous fan of Rolex um, from the marketing aspect. I believe right. that they are marketing geniuses. And the fact that they can do something so small as change a bracelet and make everybody salivate about it 
is amazing. <laughs> this uh, is amazing. I, you're right. I, I, I love Seiko. Um, I have to. I built my business on them first by selling them and uh -huh. then by homaging their discontinued models. Um, again, I love what they do from a design standpoint. That um, works into Doc Locke's question. Why did you choose Seiko as the base inspiration for your work? Well, I'll, I'll, so wait, let me ask, let me answer my third, my, yes. oh, my third brand. Um, wow, that's a good question. Uh, probably uh, a brand like Ulysses Nardin. I like just weird things. And when yeah. the freak came out 25, 30 years ago, you know, watch that you didn't wind without a crown. I was like, wow, that's outside the box thinking. So Andreas. why did I, well, oh, so oh, sorry, why did I, yes. why did I watch Seiko? Simply because they stopped it. They stopped the SKX 007. So that was, I had to, I really didn't have a choice. Uh, I was selling upwards of 3000 SKXs a year. Uh, so I kind of needed to bring something to the table to keep that going. To replace it, yeah, to fill that vacuum. Absolutely. Very interesting. Andreas, do you still have the TGV Squale 1521? I didn't bring it with Burgundy? me, but it's still in my watch chest. Absolutely. Daniel Gritter is, have you seen Nomadic watches? This is a small brand out of I've Belfast. Heard of the, I have heard of it, and I heard of it not long ago. I can't say that I know much about it, but I definitely did. I heard about it just very recently. I wonder why. Connor Mac. Oh, well, they're doing quite well. I've actually featured them on my channel okay. a couple of times. They're doing quite well. Brand new brand, small stuff. Looks uh, kind of along the Tudor uh, design kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but good stuff. Solid brand. Lovely guy there uh, running the show over there in Belfast. Connor Mac, any plans to homage mm -hmm. any other brands? <sighs> We're getting more along the ways of doing designs that are a little more original at this point. Um, so I would say not really, not at this point. Uh, I like to stick to my Seikos. I stick to Seikos because I know them really well. Uh, mm -hmm. I know the whole lineup. I know all about them. Uh, so that's kind of like a lot of my inspiration. Watching time, Rufus199, and as a member, thank you so much, Watching Time. Any collaborations in the near future coming up, Mark? Um, I'm working on one with an totally outside watches, uh, a guy with a decent YouTube file with a, actually a very large YouTube audience. Um, I think bigger than mine. Um, wow. so I'm doing something with him. Uh, and then uh, there's something else cooking for the end of the year. Mark, what are your thoughts on the Laco pro Fle fleegers as a, well, as a vendor, it makes me very difficult to carry them. Um, I, I don't know what he exactly means by pro. Uh, there's customizable ones that uh, you can choose the dial, the size, the bracelet, the strap, everything. Um, and it makes it hard for a retailer to carry. Um, or it could be the ones that he just means the ones that are north of a thousand bucks. And I think they're amazing. Andreas, again, will you introduce tritium tubes into the Islanders? Yeah, I've actually... I would you actually like have to, two. You have tritium tubes on some of your watches. Not an Islanders, no. No. Okay. Like he's asking if I if I will. Um, I would like to. Um, and it's been talked about. Uh, there's people don't realize there's more to doing. Tritium is not. Um, uh, it's expensive for one. Correct? Yeah, but it's just not simple. Uh, there's a lot of importation headaches, especially if you make them out of the country, which almost everybody does. You need a license from the Nuclear, Nuclear Regulatory Commission of the U.S. Uh, also, it's just radioactive, uh, even right. though it's no more radioactive than a banana. So, yeah. but yeah, I'd like to. Lin Linda is asking me, will I do a collab with TGV and give us a full Italian episode? Maybe, man. It's a good idea. How good was I just watched Italian? him. He just did an Italian episode. He did with okay. a dude. Yeah, I was watching, and uh, he did uh, mostly in Italian. I was like, "Wow!" I gotta go uh, go check that out. Perfect three watch collection from Alvaro. Oh my goodness! How I do you how do you do that when you've got you know two hundred watches? I know. Um, it would be, uh, I guess, my Submariner because it's timeless. Uh, it would be, you know, I happen to love I. Uh, my father is a uh, Concord Mariner from the 80s. Very thin, elegant, beautiful dress watch. Um, and then I need a, a, a knock around, uh, an SKX. High beat or spring drive, asks ooh, Nick May. Ooh, spring drive is so cool. I love spring drive, man. Yeah, I recently cool. did one on a Grand Seiko, a, a Chrono GMT, very, very complex watch. Oh, wow. And just just looking at that thing at yeah. the back, you know, through the back, 
case is just like wow and just to think that there's a little generator in the watch it's a little you know? generator and you're powering the generate you are powering the whole the whole shebang it's pretty Isn't awesome. it amazing it's kind it of really incredible is. It and really of is. course the sweep on that second hand was just smooth as smooth it's, can be oh my god you go back to a rolex then it looks all clunky and awkward yeah exactly then. exactly mark what do you think of the zenit as a brand um or zenith i like it Z zenith zenith is what they call it uh i i will admit they've gotten a little funky as of late <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. you know, like maybe the last 10 years or so. Uh, but, uh, I do dig the, uh, the chronos, uh, the El Premier chronos. Um, yeah, I got nothing bad to say about them. Carla Martin in the room and a member. Thank you, Carla. what do you think of the Seiko rowing blazers worth buying? Only if you're a fan of the brand. Other than that, it's not going to appreciate, uh, colors are interesting. They're cool, but other than if you follow the whole rowing blazers thing um other than that no <laughs> it looks like uh julio is saying that the the italian show was with davide i assume he means with davide cecchini who's a big uh, watch channel here yeah somebody's a guy with name. tattoos all over yes his arms, with rock, his rock on his on his yes on his yes knuckles. that was him yes. yeah that's davide cecchini lovely guy um TGV on smart that may still happen guys you never know you never know what's in the future this is a great collab thank you so much for 20th century boy uh mark that is the end of our show thank you for oh. answering all those questions thank you for having through. me yeah it was absolutely great once again mark from long island watch guys if you're not already subbed get over there it's a great channel you're going to learn a lot about uh how watches work and so on you can just hear but by you know Mark's lingo there, how much he knows about engineering and how these things work. It's really, really educational stuff. Mower Man just got me there at the last moment with a $20 ah. super chat, so I can't miss it. Multiple purchases from Long Island Watch over Thank the you. years and always satisfied. Great prices, quality, and service. Plus supporting a class act. Look at that. Your biggest fan is in the room. It's amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate everybody. It's really, it's it kind of, it gets lost on me sometimes, but it, it's kind of insane. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, man, I'd love to have you back on at some point in the future. It. Sure. And absolutely. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure. I'm glad we finally figured out uh, yes. time to uh, fit, fit you in here. And I want to keep you. the show nice and tight. So, uh, so next time I ask you, you're not like, oh, God, he kept me on there for oh, three no. hours and bored. No, it's not like off. Tim with Tim, <laughs> where they, you guys talk for like five, six, seven hours. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Um, I go on my phone like 10, 1030 at night and it shows that Tim's still on. I'm like, you guys still talking? <laughs> still talking. That's the way it works over in Tim's thing. But it's uh, it's long awesome. form content is what you might yes. describe it as. But we keep things lean over here on the SWAT show but it was awesome. an absolute pleasure man and Thank you. Uh, Ditto. Uh, again everybody go over to longislandwatch.com check out all his watches he has the islanders that we mentioned but he also has a lot of seikos and other brands that he can source for you and send you and you know it's coming from a good guy who really really understands his watches guys leave it running uh in the outro i'm going to play it right now and just leave it running because you will be popped over to the man himself tim wright who is already live over there on the tim wright channel and he'll be talking as mark just described there till the wee hours of the morning talking <laughs> watches and everything to do with it so uh just leave it running and enjoy this outro once again mark fantastic thank you so much man thank you very much i appreciate it